All right, everyone, this is a very strange thing that we've got going on here. Let me know if you can hear me. I don't know how long we're even going to try this. If, if my audio is not coming through, the camera is very strange. Something is going on with my software and it's taking like this little tiny, little bitty picture. Uh, what's the matter? <laughs> It's oh. you. <laughs> Can you? All right, hold on a second here. Uh, so wait a minute. I delayed us that much for, all right, loud and clear. We can hear you, but it's kind of quiet. How about this? Is this any better? Um, so let me see what we got going on here. Now, you can see us. We're scooching back into place. So here's here's the weird thing, and here's why we got delayed so much. And I'm really sorry. And by the way, thank you so much for those of you who stuck around for 25 minutes and waited for us. I, I am so sorry. So just real quick, what ha what's happening right now, and it's the weirdest thing, is it's everything's coming through on my software. But then when I went to go stream and I look at it on YouTube, literally all I can see right now and the reason why I was sitting all the way back there is head. Joanna's forehead <laughs> is all I can see. So I thought, oh my gosh, something is wrong. I had to restart the computer. I did all of this stuff just so that I would get this thing set up. And it looks like YouTube is showing me something that is not true. At least you got the full body um, experience there and yeah. um, really strange thing. And she said, move up. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. All right. Wait, I, so, have a, I have a funny comment. You have a funny comment already. Okay. okay. I mean, there's been a lot of funny comments. I've I had can't a lot even of fun imagine. Actually, being on the chat, um, Joe said that he was collecting BBS. Didn't even realize 25 minutes went by. That's a fish. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. For you well, there. like I said, I am so sorry that we made you wait, and I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much for being here. You guys are are totally awesome. And like I said, it's still messed up on my screen, and so. We're just going to go ahead and, and deal with that situation. So mm -hmm. thank you. So so quick announcements so we can get right into the stuff. I have, actually have a lot to talk about tonight, a lot of cool things. Uh, Joanna's video came out this morning, Petco versus PetSmart Aquatic Plants. If you want to see uh, just kind of how uh, they're, they're different and the different offerings they have. Uh, Friday's video is going to be cool because we're going to do something on filtration or I'm going to do something on filtration. And so I'm always excited to do that kind of thing. Uh, and then you've got a fun little video coming out on Saturday. Uh, a lot of cool stuff. By the way, Bonnie, thank you so much for the super chat. I saw that roll in like a million hours ago before we <laughs> ever even got started. Uh, so that was very nice. Thank you so much. Let's just get right into it because I've, I've already wasted half of your evening. I feel horrible about that. Uh, we're talking about fish stores. We're talking about what makes a fish store great, what makes it not so great. And I know that many of you are going to have an opinion on this, and I can't wait to go through the comments and hear what you guys have to say about fish stores. I'm going to hit a couple of highlights of what I think uh, we're looking for when we're going into a fish store, and my hope is that this is especially useful when new people go into a, a, a store and they're trying to figure out if this is a place where they should buy from. By the way, uh, Xanadu do. Thank you so much for becoming a partner. Glad you're here with us. Okay, first thing, and I think most of us would agree with this, and that is when it comes to a local fish store, are the fish healthy? Nothing else really matters. If your fish aren't healthy, everything else we're going to talk about tonight, it doesn't matter at all because the last thing you want is to bring home fish that are not you, you keep put them in a tank and they wind up getting sick and they die and they also kill all your other fish. And so there's a lot of things that you want to be looking for when you go into a, hold on, I got stuff all over the place now. I was throwing things all around the room trying to get this thing set up. Not in a fit of rage, but just moving things panic. around to see what panic I can do. Not panic. It was just it's panic at the disco. A, a little bit of urgency. Okay. <laughs> so first thing, you're looking for signs of ick. All right. You want to see, are there any white spots on the fish? Are they acting irregularly? Are they flashing? Which means are they scraping on surfaces, on rocks? Ick is a bad thing. The last thing you want to do is bring in disease into your fish tanks. Even if you're quarantining, if you know they're sick, stay away from those fish. So we're looking for ick. We're looking for fungi and we're looking for bacterial infections that are external. And so do the fish kind of look 
uh, fuzzy? Do they have kind of like a white sort of mucusy shimmer to them that's a little bit unusual, like a thick mucus? Those are fish that you probably want to stay away from. Are the fish piping at the surface of the tank? In other words, when they have their mouth and they just kind of open it back and forth, are they doing that? Because those fish could have ick, they could have something with, something's wrong with gas exchange at that point. So those are fish that could be a problem. If you're looking at live bears especially, are they doing what I like to call the death wobble? And what that means is, are they fins clamped together? And some of you have seen this, especially true with mollies. They've got their fins clamped together and they're kind of shaking back and forth towards the top of the tank and they're getting skinny. Those fish are done. If you bring those fish home, you probably aren't going to see them survive. And so you're looking for that. The other thing that you're looking for when it comes to a local fish store is, are there a lot of dead fish in the tanks? Now, I want to be careful here. Because in some ways, we also have to put our ourselves in the position of the fish store owner. I am sure most fish stores have employees going around the fish store trying to pull out fish before it opens up. But let's face it, every once in a while, there might be a dead fish stuck behind a sponge filter or a box filter or in a decoration, and they're going through, and then all of a sudden, they lodge, dislodge some things when they're catching fish, or it just happens to float up, and now you've got a dead fish in the tank. So I'm not talking about that, really. If you are going to a pet store, a local fish store that's got a really good reputation and you see a dead fish in a tank, here's my recommendation. Don't call it out in front of the whole entire store, but excuse me, sir, you've got a dead fish over here in this tank. Just wanted to let you know. And there's like 500 customers standing mm -hmm. around. The best way to handle that is when nobody's around, just call somebody over and say, hey, listen, I noticed in the third tank on the, on the second row, there is a dead fish in there. You might want to take care of it when you get a chance. If it's a store with a great reputation and you've gotten fish from them before, that, that's the way I would choose to handle that because there's a lot going on in the course of a day and sometimes one of those things might get missed. Now, if you go to that store and there's dead fish in this tank, dead fish in this tank, dead fish in this tank, that to me shows a lack of attention to detail. And if that's happening, if those things are constantly getting missed, what else is getting missed in the background? Now, the other thing you should pay attention to, and this is really important when it comes to healthy fish, and that is what type of filtration system are they running? The reason you want to pay attention to that, because in some fish stores, and there are some that we visit where they have an entire block of tanks on a single sump system. That means that water is recirculating through maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 tanks or more. If any of the fish are diseased in that tank, there is a potential for that disease to spread to the other tanks. And so you want to be paying attention to that. So are they on a central system? Are they running sponge filters, box filters? Now, if I owned a local fish store, I would do sponge or box filters. And the reason for that is it would minimize the amount of time or it would minimize the likelihood that disease is going to be transferred from one tank to another. And so that would be the way that I would run it. But some other stores, that's they run a central system. And the more tanks that are on that system, if there's disease, like I said, the higher the likelihood that that disease can spread. Here's the number one thing, I think, when it comes to a store. And, and not a lot of places do this. And it's one of the reasons why Aquarium Co-op is not an official sponsor of the channel, but we have, an, we have an association. We work together sometimes. And one of the reasons why I like what they do is they have popularized in many ways the idea of, here's a novel idea, the store quarantining the fish before they sell them to the customer. That is a huge deal. And I will tell you right now, if I owned a local fish store, that would be my number one thing. I would advertise that every chance I got. It would be out on the internet. It might even be part of like my sign. Welcome to, I don't know, Jason's Fish Store, where we quarantine fish for four weeks, no matter what. Quarantine R Us. Quarantine R Us, yeah. And to me, that's key. That is absolutely key. When you find a fish store that is taking the time to quarantine those fish, and the reason why I use four weeks is four weeks is ultra safe. It's like pretty much any disease that a fish can carry will make itself known within that four-week time period. So ick, certainly bacterial diseases, internal parasites where all of a sudden they stop eating. I can tell you, we've got a tank in our fish room right now where we got some new fish. I haven't shown them yet on the channel. We'll do that shortly. But we got some ick in one of our tanks. 
I had those fish for about two weeks. And guess what? Ick. After two weeks, they were fine. They're eating. They're not flashing. They're not losing weight. They're rambunctious little guys. Yep. And Ick showed up after two weeks. I finally noticed it. And luckily, we got on it right away. A little bit of Ick X, a little bit of salt, a little bit of heat like I did in the in the Ick video. And it's working out well. Nobody is getting... It looks like we've got it beat. But the point is... Had I waited just a couple days or even a week and be like, yeah, looks good, and thrown them into a, a larger tank, now I got a bigger problem. And so when you can find a fish store that's quarantining fish, and I don't mean, oh, yeah, you know what? We, we, we watch them for the first couple days they're in the store, and as long as they're okay for the first couple days, we send them out. I got news for you. Even Ick, most of the time, isn't going to show up after a couple days of receiving those fish. And so if they're only watching them for a couple days, they might as well not do it at all. I mean, other than catch the really, really almost dead fish. But you want to have that extra bit of quarantine. It's Like I said, it's the number one thing. If you find a place that's doing that, that is a really awesome thing. Besides that, besides the health, obviously you're looking for the quality of the fish independent of fish disease. And so what I mean by that is look at their tanks. Just because they brought in 100 guppies or 500 guppies doesn't mean that all 500 of those guppies deserve to be sold. Some of them, the fins might not look so good. Some of them, they may have problems. You might see problems with their spines or they might be a little bit skinny, or they might just be deformed. And some of those things we don't necessarily see right when we buy the fish. If there's a genetic abnormality, let's face it, a lot of times when we're buying fish from a fish store, we tend to get them when they're a little bit younger. And some of those issues can show up later on in a few months. Next thing you know, you've got a fish that would normally live for five years and it's dead after a year and a half. And not only that, maybe it had a weakened immune system and so it was more prone to disease and stress and all kinds of issues. And so you're looking for a store that isn't afraid to say, you know what, yeah, I know I bought 500 guppies, but 20 of these are not sellable. I'm not gonna sell these to my customers knowing that they don't look that good. Maybe the color's way off and, and they've just got genetic or, 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 or cosmetic abnormalities. You want a fish store that recognizes those things and says, you know what, these aren't, they're not up to my quality. And they can deal with that through their wholesaler and not pass that off to the customer. So you've got the health, you've got fish quality in general. And of course, one of the things that I like to see in a, in a fish store is selection. And this is, I think, something, I, we have a fish store, right, that we, that, that, that's fairly close to us. And I like it. I mean, they do a lot of things right, but it was one of those things where you would go in there every week for a while. I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> and then it was like, after a while, you're like, I haven't seen anything new since the last time I was here, or the time before that, or the time before that. Mm -hmm. And then it was like we'd go there once a month. Same thing. We never really saw anything new. Mm -hmm. And then we would go there twice a year. <laughs> and still, it's like stuff. Molly's, Platties, Guppies, <laughs> Grammys, Cory Cats, Goldfish. And by the way, all those fish are cool. We have the vast majority of them in our fish room right now. Mm -hmm. But if you've already got them, why go back? Right? And that's something that I think... Uh, is something certainly that I would like to see. I would like to go to a fish store and be a little bit surprised. Like, oh, wow, you've got these in? Yeah, I want six of those, you know? So fish selection, I think, is a big deal. Uh, price. Obviously, price is something that we have to consider. But here, I, I think we need to be careful when it comes to price because often, not always, but often you're going to get what you pay for. And I mean a couple things. We talked about how important it is for a legitimate quarantine period. That costs money. Think about what we're what, what we're asking a fish store to do. If you run a business, you're going to know that this is a big ask. And what we're saying is, can you please take this inventory that you've spent thousands of dollars on, stick it off to the side, hold it for a month, don't sell it. Most likely you're gonna lose a certain percentage of those fish because the whole point of the quarantine was to make sure that you weren't passing off sick fish to your customers. So now you're eating that cost, right? The, the fish store is eating that cost. Maybe they're medicating the fish because now that the medication is on them, right? They've shifted that ownership from the customer having to buy that medication to deal with that problem to them, the local fish store. All of that costs money. They need space. They've got money wrapped up in inventory they can't sell. 
If we're talking about them possibly not passing off the weaker looking fish that even aren't sick, that costs money. And so if the fish store is doing those things right, I can't stress this enough, if the fish costs a little bit more, initially it's going to cost you less in the long run, right? It's like buying a quality automobile. Yeah, you could save thousands of dollars buying an automobile that has less quality and then find out in three years, four years, five years, six years, you're spending a lot of money repairing that. Now, obviously fish aren't normally that expensive and they might not last that long, but it's the same general concept. So the price is important, but also build in those other things for value. And the other thing you have to be careful of too is we have a couple of large fish stores. They're not really, I don't know if I would call them local fish stores, but they're not a chain either. And it's interesting because you really have to know the market and what you're buying when you walk in there. I'll give you an example. You can go in there and buy some Tetras and, and some quarry cats and some of the smaller schooling fish. And generally, they've got really competitive prices. The, you go down their African cichlid aisle and it is mind-numbingly insane what they're charging for these fish. Nobody in their right mind should be buying fish at this price. I walked in there one time recently. They had a probably, I don't know, like a 75-gallon, maybe a 100-gallon tank set aside with Imbuna cichlids. I love Imbuna cichlids. I think a lot of you do too. How much do you think you should pay for a full-grown Imbuna? You know, four or five inches. It might not even be purebred, right? Four or five inch Imbuna. Now, I know what I can pay at the swaps and the auctions and online. You might pay a few dollars, right? Maybe five, ten bucks. These fish were 50 bucks a piece for a full-grown Imbuna. They are selling peacock cichlids that can be 40, 50, 60, 70 dollars each. Forget Lake Tanganyikan fish. If you want shell dwellers, they're 20 dollars a piece. If they get like the feather fins in, you're looking at 80 bucks a fish. I could maybe understand that if they were doing the other things we just talked about. If they were quarantining the fish for four weeks, if their fish looked absolutely amazing and there was never any evidence of fish disease, but that's not the case, right? They're your kind of av- what I would call your average fish store. So some of the prices might be great. Some of them are literally just, I I can't even believe that someone would walk in there and pay that kind of money for the fish they have. And they're not, you know, most of these fish that I'm talking about, these peacocks are not even colored up yet. They're not full grown. It's it's really interesting. So you gotta be careful there. Weigh, what, what are you actually buying? If they're doing the things right, a little bit of extra money, I have no problem paying that. Mm-hmm. Think about the guarantees that they're offering, right? Are, are, are they gonna stand behind their fish? Now, again, here we have to be careful. I don't think a local fish store should be responsible for someone who didn't understand the nitrogen cycle and had ammonia or nitrite spikes or something going on with their water. So for me personally, I am happy to know that a fish store's got some kind of you know number of days, 24 hours, 48 hours. Some of them go as long as seven days and say, bring your fish in with a water sample. And as long as your water's okay, we'll do something with the fish. We'll either replace it or, or give you a store credit, even if they don't give me necessarily the money back. If they're doing the other things right, I'm fine with a store credit. But it's nice when you know that they are standing behind their fish in some way. Thank you so much, uh, Kay Yang. Thank you so Thank much you. for the super chat. Really appreciate it. I'm glad you're here. Um, the other thing that you want to think about too is is their service. What are the what are the people like that work there? Uh, you know, are the employees are they knowledgeable? Obviously, that's a big thing, right? But are they friendly? Are they welcoming? Are they helpful to their customers? Again, understanding that sometimes. And I know this by talking to people who own local fish stores that you do have those customers that can be demanding of people's time. And they might get a little upset when things aren't quite working out their way, or maybe they're you know blaming the fish store for something that has happened. And that can be an issue too, right? Hmm. But when you've got someone who's just demeaning, who's telling people that, um, it's, it's their fault that their fish are dead. They're not standing behind their product. That can be a problem. And it's especially a problem when you think about, it's not just how they talk to you, but I've, how many reviews have you read online where it's like, you know what? They're actually talking to other people in a way that is really rude. And that winds up on Yelp or it winds up in a review. And so 
from a fish store perspective, just be careful how you're treating your customers because customers have options. They have other places they can go. So, you know, and, and beyond that, what is the fish store atmosphere like? Is it clean? Or does it smell horrible? Is there stuff everywhere? We already know most fish stores, they're gonna be, what, 80 degrees maybe? And so it's gonna be yeah. warm as it is, leave your right? Coat in the car. Yeah, so yeah, you leave your coats in the car even in the winter. Is it noisy? <laughs> they have like a blower that, you know, they've got sponge filters, but they've got a major blower and it's, you know, it's really noisy and it's really annoying. Just what are the aesthetics like? And I, again, I would say this to, to fish store owners, there's competition out there now. And I get it. The, the place doesn't have to be like a tourist attraction, but at the same time, it's nice when the fish store doesn't smell and there's not water on the floor and there's not stuff laying all over the place because that, that can be a little bit of a problem, I think. Uh, and, and along with that too, the tank appearance. I know you're kind of well, someone who likes to have at least a, a tank that's not horribly kept, wouldn't you say? Well, I should say so, but yeah. along with fish stores, they should have a nice selection of fun size nano tanks. I'm just going to throw that in there and hardscaping. Okay. Just All right. Throw so, that in there. fun size nano tanks and hardscaping. Uh, truth will out. Thank you so much. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you so you much for are being so here. so cute. Who are you Glad talking you're about? Yeah, it's, it's not me. <laughs> it's you and your imaginary friend. Uh, so, anyway, now I want to also be careful here when it comes to the way the tanks look. I have actually said on my channel numerous times that sometimes tanks that look the best aren't necessarily the healthiest for the fish, right? And so I'm okay with a little bit of algae on the back of the glass, on the sides of the glass, uh, maybe got a little bit of green hair algae in there, totally fine with that. I actually did a video about water quality and how you really can't, it's very difficult to say, okay, this water's great and this water's bad just by looking at it, right? Because you can't see ammonia, you can't see nitrite, you can't see nitrate levels at 500 parts per million. So we have to be careful there. But what I don't like is when you walk into a store and you this glass is all scratched. And you know how then you get the algae that's growing in the scratches and it's hard to see the fish. And it's like, okay, time out. If, if you don't care enough to at least clean the front panel of the glass mm -hmm. so that we can clearly see the fish, Again, that makes me wonder what else is being neglected in that fish store. And so while I'm not concerned about algae and things like that, but if there's like an inch of detritus in the gravel and there's stuff floating all in the tank and, you know, it's just you can't even see the fish. I can't tell you how many fish stores, and you can attest to this, how many yeah. fish stores we've walked in. You walk back out. The camera's in the car, mm -hmm. tripod's out there ready to go, but we never bring it in because I want to go in there look around and, and see all these things. So generally speaking, if you see a fish store tour on our channel, these are fish stores where the, the quarantine thing is, is, again, that's a little bit more rare, but in terms of healthy fish, clean tanks, uh, people are generally nice, at least from our experience, those are the fish store tours that you see. I'm not gonna take a, a camera and be like, all right, guys, let's go ahead and look at 50 tanks. You can barely see the fish and, you know, maybe the lights, just the room lights are on and they just don't have the tanks illuminated. So it's really hard to see what you're buying. So tank appearance, it matters, but I wouldn't get necessarily carried away in uh, having the tanks just spotless, right? We should give them some sort of little uh, primetime TV sticker for their front door. Oh, yeah, that with would be like, something, huh? With like a little gold star. Yeah. You've been uh, approved. Yeah, yeah. And then it changes, like, it changes owners gonna, and be like, man, this prime time thing doesn't take, mean anything. Take this yeah. sticker off. <laughs> right. They're gone. <laughs> uh, hard goods. I think that's another one you're looking for in a, a fish store. If you've got a fish store. Now, again, here's another thing that I think we have to be careful of too. S some people are hard on the local fish store when they don't have all the f latest filtration and heaters and all the stuff that they want, lights. We have to understand that a local fish store has they've got some serious competition, right? I think they should have enough equipment to satisfy their customers' needs, quite frankly, when they're in an emergency, right? I mean, if we're honest, a lot of us, when we need a heater, lights, filter, and we're setting up a new tank, we're, what are we doing? Amazon.com, let me go see what I want. I watched a couple reviews, I ordered it, I got it in, yay, it was great. A lot of times, I know at least for us, when we're buying stuff like heaters, lights, or filters, at a, a fish store, it's because something broke and we can't really wait, right? So 
they should be carrying hard goods especially like gravel and sand and stuff because that stuff's really hard to ship but i don't i'm not overly hard on a local fish store if they are not carrying all the latest and greatest things right here's something that i think would really be interesting for local fish stores to consider and, and i think if you've got a store that's doing this it's really awesome and that is when they buy from local breeders and there's a lot of reasons why this is advantageous for everyone i think it builds community I think when you've got people coming in that are selling healthy fish that are in demand, right? So those two things have to be met. I'm not talking about somebody who's like, yeah, you know what happened? I've got me uh, two, yes, two full batches of convict fry, and I need you to buy them from me. And the local fish store is like, um, I can't sell these things. I'm, I'm glad you bred them, but they'll never sell at my mm -hmm. fish store, and you want money for them, and I just can't do that. But if you've got something that's worth well, that, that they can turn around and sell... I think it's a great idea to buy from local breeders. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One, if you think about like when we did the APET tour at right, the wholesaler, it was a fantastic video. And by the way, I have it linked down in the description below, along with some other videos that I think might be helpful. I did a video on whether or not local fish stores can survive. I did a video on um, what was it, a quarantine process that we use. That's all down there if you want to take a look. But when we talked with the wholesaler, it was incredible. It was one of the best conversations I've ever had with somebody who keeps fish because he's been, he's had such a long career. And we spent a little bit of time talking about fish stress. And, you know, think about this. You've got fish that are going from possibly overseas. They get to a trans shipper. Then it has to go from there to a wholesaler, to a local fish store, to your aquarium. Think about that. It's probably been in, well, it was in the water it was in originally. Then it got a new water at the wholesaler, new water at the local fish store. And these places might not necessarily have the same water parameters. And then it's going to you. That causes a lot of stress. And so if a fish store is smart and they've got people in their area that can buy local, that can sell them fish locally, most likely, one, they're going from a breeder who cares, usually cares a lot about their fish, at least all the local breeders I know. This is what they love, right? They breed these fish because they like them. So it's going from there. It might spend a few hours in a bag going to the local fish store and then it's going to you. And here's the beauty of it. Often, all of those water parameters are pretty much the same. So they were bred in your water, usually. I mean, there are absolutely some exceptions. They go to the local fish store, which might only be a half hour away. And then to you, you might only be a half hour from them. There's a much higher likelihood that the water parameters are going to be similar and a lot less stress because there is a lot less transportation involved. And so when a local fish store makes that commitment, that can really help bring in healthy fish. And not only that, if they've got problems with fish health, they've got problems with genetic things, they can call that person up in 20 minutes and be like, hey, listen, you dropped off these 50 fish. 30 of them were great, 20 of them not so much, right? And they can deal with that. It's a little bit easier to do. All right, so those are kind of some of my thoughts. And then I think... <sighs> If someone was watching this, and again, I, I'm, I can't wait to read your comments in the live chat because if a fish store or someone who wanted to open up a fish store are watching this, I think there would be some things that they could learn just from our community. Uh, certainly one of them, I think, is the old days are over, right? For a local fish store, those days that we reminisce about in the 80s or the 70s, 80s, 90s, where you walk into this place and it's hot and it's smelly and it's dirty and it's loud and it didn't matter because that was the, pretty much the only place you could buy fish. I think we're in a situation now because of the internet and everything that that entails that it, it really is a buyer's market. And I don't know if that will ever change at this point, right? Because we have options. Yeah, you can go to the local fish store, but you can go on Craigslist. You can go on Aquabid. You can buy from some of the larger online retailers. Uh, you can go to swaps and auctions and fish clubs, and then they're getting squeezed from the other side, from the Petco's and Pet Smarts. So if they do these other things the right way, they quarantine, they're selling healthy fish, that goes a long way, you know, and even the education part. Mm -hmm. A lot of us don't rely on a local fish store anymore for the education. You go onto the internet, think about what you mostly do. It's like, and, and I wouldn't just trust one video. And even if it's my video, I, I, I've got my experience. But if you're searching angelfish, yeah, we did an angelfish species profile, but go on my video and maybe Aquarium Co-op's got a really good, I know he's got a really good angelfish one and there's a couple other ones. And all of a sudden you look at four or five different sources and where the information aligns, 
you can pretty much feel safe like yeah this is good this is this is the the core and then maybe there's some differences on the periphery based on experience but you get a better feel for what's going on right now so if a local fish store were watching quarantine if you can quarantine for four weeks i would advertise that every single place you can because that's going to make customers feel at ease health has got to be number one give customers a reason to come back selection give them ex some excitement like wow you know what i just saw this fish there i had to have them how many of you you go to a local fish store and it's like you're just expecting the normal thing and all of a sudden you just catch it out of the corner of your eye there it is <laughs> the fish you didn't even know you wanted now some of us get into trouble for that because we wind <laughs> up buying things and like oh man turns out that this thing needs a 125 gallon tank and i'm sticking it in a 75 but how many of you do that where you walk into the fish store and like oh this is, I have to have these. I have to. I'm not leaving here until I get those fish, right? I think the days of being the hot, smelly, dirty fish store, like I said, I think that needs to be improved. You you had a good idea that one time about having like the little scaping area in a fish store. Heck yeah, a dry scaping area. A place where there's community. I mean, how cool would that be? How, how many of you, where if you walk into a store and they had a little place, and I know space is at a premium, right? But they had a place maybe with some chairs and some sand and some hardscaping materials. Yeah. And you could go there and maybe some books that you could just read mm. and just kind of hang out there and play with these things. What if that became like the destination place, right? How cool would that be? And so, yes. Uh, okay, this this ties to it. And it's a funny comment that I just read. It. It's from Brandon. Fish stores need a coffee bar for us obsessed people who just go there for no reason. I think I got a name for it. If we open something up, which we're not going to, but I would. No, you my, can just pass that name my, right along. Here you go, brain, somebody. Fish Cafe. Fish Cafe. You go to the Fish Cafe. You have fish you can buy, hardscaping you can buy, yeah. and you can also like make them and have a coffee bar because you have to I have think it'd be cool. Bar. They could show like little, I don't know, YouTube videos or informational things or bring in yeah. local fish clubs. Yeah. Make it a community. Um, I think fish stores, if you've got employees that are rude or maybe you got some old, <laughs> older fish store owners that are like, yeah, I've been around since the 60s and... You know, you treat all your customers like they're they're idiots. Nobody wants to go back to a place where they feel bad and they feel, you know, education is one thing, but how you do it is a different story, right? And again, I think the, the local breeder thing is important, not only because you might get healthier fish, but think about it this way. And some of you know this because some of you breed fish. If a local fish store won't take your fish, what do you do? What is the very next thing you're thinking about doing? I know what I do. I sell at the local swaps and auctions because that's a, an avenue that I have. But if I didn't have that, guess where they go? They'd go on Craigslist or Aquabid or somewhere else. And now instead of having that local breeder be a partner, mm -hmm. they're now your competitor. And guess what? They can undercut you in price all day long because they don't have any overhead except for their fish room, right? So I, you know, I think about Maltese, multifasciatus. We've got a store by us who, again, they have very little selection and they could probably sell the Maltese for 10, 12, 15 bucks a piece, which would be reasonable. And yet they tend not to do that. And so they lose out on those sales, but then I can go out on the local swaps and auctions because I don't have the overhead and now they're five, six, seven bucks a piece. And so even if they got them in at that point, it doesn't matter because one, they have to now compete with me. And two, they've got the overhead, right? And now I'm making more money than I could make when I'm selling them directly to them, even though it would be easier to do that. So it's there's a it's a lot to think about. But again, the, the local fish store, if, if someone's doing it right, I, I think it's so important to make sure that you support them when you can, because it's a tough business. I mean, if, when you really think about how they're being squeezed from the big box stores, how they're being squeezed from the smaller players and online, if... If, if, if they're providing healthy fish at a decent price for what they're doing, they're helpful, the service is good, those are the stores that you want to see thrive, I think. All right, let's take some questions because I know this, like I said, I know we started late. And again, I am so sorry for those of you who waited around and, you know, 20, 20 minutes later, I finally figure out, okay, this thing on YouTube is showing me a, a weird thing and incorrect it's not even, image. yeah, incorrect image for sure. So... We have what a we lot got? of takers on the on the fish cafe. The fish cafe. Viva la fish fish cafe. I'm telling you, I would I would love to go there. I mean, they could bring in <laughs> guest speakers. They could do it would be all a kinds magical, of stuff. Magical place. Yep. And oh. then you could practice your hearts. You could practice your hardscaping there. Read some books. Wait, 
But since everybody here is like from all over, it would have to be in like a like a taco truck that would move around. The fish cafe is in a taco truck. Oh yeah, like a like why a, a taco truck? truck? Why wouldn't it be? Okay, now we're talking about converted school bus. I was thinking like, well, one, I was thinking it was going to be in the building because that would be cooler because yeah. then you could actually look at the fish and stuff. Yeah, sure. But but I'm just thinking now that we should probably be <laughs> mobile or we're going to have to have multiple the locations. Traveling fish. Yeah. Taco truck. But does it have yeah. tacos at least? Oh, uh, you probably s switch around. You know, you keep it fresh. You're not fish oh. tacos. That's poor taste. I <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> uh, hold on, we've got a question here. NVR two serious CC. Where are you guys from? Yeah. Um, well, we are from the Chicago land area, yep. and we really like that. At least in terms of fish, because we are surrounded by really cool fish clubs and stuff, and that makes things pretty mm -hmm. awesome. Clint, you got that right. Black sand and black coffee. Oh my that gosh. sounds like a shirt. Yeah. I'm going to do it. Sounds it. like a shirt. Along with my I Love Inuits. And you're actually really close to coming out with your shirt, right? We, we keep saying this. You know, we put the, the reds and the orange tricolors on clearance. On the clearance to make way To make room for, for the shirt that you are almost done with, which is pretty cool. I saw... Yes. I saw like uh, the he, pl he, preliminary. He critiqued it and I shot it down. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll probably be better for it. All right, hold on. Brian asks... Should I get a black angelfish or a sapphire angelfish? I have a 40-gallon breeder. I don't know if you can go wrong with either one. So, you know, the thing that you have to think about nice. is with the colors of the angelfish, what are the substrate colors and background? Because if, if your substrate and background are both black already, you probably won't see that black angelfish as much. But if you've got lighter or no background and the gravel's lighter, that black angelfish might stand out a little bit nicer. So I would kind of use what my <laughs> fish tank looks like and then buy based on that. All right. Oh my gosh. Let's see here. What these, else we got? These comments are the best. Thank you for your business. That's what we would <laughs> say. Yes. <laughs> nice. Uh, oh, what is this? Chef Tyler, my store has a betta cave. That sounds really cool. It so you does. can you walk into it and look, look up and the sides. And there's there's oh, bettas, bettas everywhere. Bettas everywhere. Oh. Yep. Uh, John Wood says, don't mean to sound like a broken record, but Benson's has everything you have mentioned as well as sponsoring a bus trip to aquatic experience and before a virus, what? a monthly get that John, that is exactly what I'm talking about. That yeah. this type of thing. And if and I have never been there, so I don't know, I'm going to trust you that you, you're, you're a fish guy, you know what you're talking about, but that's the kind of stuff that I think a fish store could do that might not cost a lot of money mm -hmm. necessarily. I mean, the sponsoring of the, the, the trip yeah but you know some of this stuff it doesn't take a lot of money but it builds community and it builds loyal customers and like when you've when you've got even the breeders coming in instead of having competitors now you've got salesmen right because if you're selling fish to a local fish store you want them to the you know sell more of them hey go over to so and so they've got great fish but all these things yeah it can be mm -hmm. it can be really awesome like i said I we i put a playlist in the description below after you watch the live stream of some cool fish store tours that we've done. Like I said, they're not perfect, but I think they do a relatively good job of, of keeping pretty healthy fish. And so that's why I show them. Uh, and it's cool always to see fish from different areas. All right, let's see here. What kind of questions do we have coming around here? I see a lot of talking amongst the, the people. And let's see here. For those of you who showed up a little late, then you missed the travesty of we started about twenty or twenty-five <laughs> minutes late because, yeah, it was it was a earth-shattering. It was good times. Twenty minutes or so. <laughs> uh, hold on, let's see here. Joe says at Primetime Aquatics, one of my local fish store has a dry hardscape spot. They'll even help you set it up in a tank and pack it so it stays in place on the way home. That what is exactly the type of stuff I'm talking about. That is a type of thing That's where, cool. let's face it, you can't find that on the internet. You're not going to get that from Aquabid. You're not going to get that from Craigslist. You're not going to get that by going to somebody's house and buying fish out of their basement usually. Mm -hmm. And so that's the kind of stuff when fish stores get that, when they change the way the fish buying experience happens, they can build something wonderful because... Let's face it, so many local fish stores have gone out of business, but I think a lot of them may have been the ones that have been around for 20 or 30 years, and they just never changed with the times, not realizing how big of a chunk the internet was going to take out of their potential business model. Let's see here. All right. Spiralina. I, uh, <laughs> Spiralina, I like that. 
I can name like seven hot, dirty, smelly uh, local fish stores here in the San Francisco Bay Area, but I guess I'm lucky. Okay. <laughs> I think you are. I, I think that is a very lucky that, thing. Yes, that could just... And again, I'm, the fish stores are going to be warm. I mean, I don't know any fish store that's got 50, 60, 70, 100 tanks that's heating each one individually. Uh, they're going to have to keep that store warm, so I don't care necessarily about that. And they're always going to have a scent. You, you can't not have that... You know, it's something that even food. it's something that we even think about in our home. It's like we're yeah. we're kind of not that we have. I mean, we we try to make sure our home is clean and tidy and everything, but it's something that I'm sure if somebody comes over to our house that doesn't keep fish, you can't have seventy or eighty fish in a in a fish tanks in a home and not have some kind of like oh there must be something in this house besides your standard house plant and Mm -hmm. maybe a cat or something like that dogs right yeah Yeah, so so uh, fish stores are gonna have a scent they're gonna be warm but when you do those other things you can make up for all that for sure Hmm. all right kim says definitely do my research before i buy anything now i don't trust any of the fish store employees anymore been told wrong info too many times for different from different ones Hmm. yeah that 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 is something that we spend, I spend a lot of time undoing in comment sections. I, and for those of you who've been with the channel for a while, you know that I spend a lot of time in the comment sections. I'm at a point now where I used to be able to answer every single comment. And I did that up until about six months ago. And it's it just, she'll tell you, I spend a lot of time in front of the computer in the comment sections of our videos. And and I yeah. try, whenever I see a question, I try my best to answer because I think that's the best way to, to reach me. You know, like I, we, like I said, we've got the email address, Instagram and Facebook, but I'm in those comment sections. And I spend a lot of time where, as an example, just this week, in the last week, someone was sold a red tail shark for a 20 gallon tank with, I don't remember the combinations, but it was something like guppies and an angel fish and then of course the red tail shark was doing what a red tail shark does and it was destroying those fish yeah. and the fish store employee said oh that should be fine <laughs> uh, another person was sold multiple full like what would be full-size grommies like the opalines golds blues and that wound up in a tank in, in like a 29 gallon and they were basically killing each other off and so mm. I get it. And, you know, it's always the same thing. Oh, the, the person at the fish store told me this was going to be okay. And, and it wasn't. And so you do have to be careful. But, but, but ultimately that is on us. Now asking a person at a fish store is part of the research. So that's, you would hope that you could trust somebody. But now in this day and age with the internet, I think we should know what we want before we walk into the store. I think there is responsibility. Marty, thank you so much for the sticker. That's sticker. awesome. Thanks, uh, Marty. Love it, man. Thank you. Uh, but it is on us. We, we do have to take personal responsibility and know, okay, what is it that we're trying to buy? Did I research the water parameters? Did I research the stocking options with that fish? Do the fish I already have, are they going to go together? Do I have the right size tank? Can I give that those fish the care that they need? It's like, you know, it's, it would be no different if you were buying a dog, right? You're like, you're not just going to run out and be like, I think I'd like a small dog and you get to the dog place and next thing you know you're walking out with a Great Dane and you've got a studio apartment and no ability to walk this Great Dane. Mm-hmm. So there, we do have a responsibility to at least try to walk in there. Now, fish store employees sometimes will give you some wrong advice. It happens. So it it's unfortunate, but that's why you hang on to the good ones. Uh, All right. Brian wants to know, do we ever take a vacation? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we do. Um, not, so we are somewhat limited. I mean, we're not usually gone for more than five to seven days. If we ever go anywhere, most of the time, if we are gone for less than three days, I don't even worry about feeding the fish. I think I mentioned this a few weeks ago on a live stream, so I'm not going to go into it in detail, but if it's just a few days, most fish can go a few days and not have any issues. We tend to feed them fairly heavily before we leave, do some nice water changes, and then we're gone. Longer than four or five days, we usually have somebody that will come in. Um, like last time, my uncle came by, and he's he was one of the pers- people that really inspired me to keep fish in the first place because he had an awesome group of fish tanks in his basement that was just cool. He had like a 100-gallon hexagon. I mean, it was huge. It was at least 100 gallons, maybe 120. Loved that tank. But anyway... He didn't come in every day, but I think it was like maybe three times over the course of six or seven days. And he fed the fish and they were all fine. Come home and yeah, they were a little hungry, but they were okay. Um, Never too serious. 
how often do you visit the LFS? Um, quite a, I, a decent amount. And it depends on how you define the LFS. Like for us within pr less than 10 minutes, five minutes, we have the big box pet coats and pet smarts, which are fine for buying sand and gravel. And plants. Um, sometimes you'll buy some plants from there. And, you know, some of those things um, very rarely will I buy fish. The only time that I bought fish from there recently, and it was surprising to me because they never had these, is the Congo Tetras that we have in our, now with the angel fish in the 40 gallon breeder, there were nine of them sitting there. They were probably you know, about an inch and a half or so. And they were on sale. They were like, what were they, like two bucks? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> what them. are they doing here? And why are they $2? And so I just bought them all. I'm like, I'll take all nine of those Congo Tetras and didn't have an issue with them. But I almost never do that. Um, there are some, like the one that's that's a little bit large. They've got a few locations in our area. Uh, we'll go there every once in a while. But again, not usually to buy fish. It's usually more looking at the hard scaping stuff and maybe mm -hmm. the plants or even the tanks. They've got a pretty good tank selection there. But um uh, the Window fish, shopping. not so much. So, but we do go there from time to time. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. a kind of a fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. All right, we what like else? the ones in Wisconsin. We kind of we consider do. them our LFS, even it, though it's an hour. And it, half if I'm buying yeah. fish from a local fish store, there are a couple that I do like, and that is Aquatics Unlimited and the Fish Factory. Both of them located outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. It just, I go there and they, the fish are healthy. We've had good luck with them. The people are nice. They've got a big selection, and yeah, I do. I like that. I like them a lot. They um, already they already saw from your thumbnail that, that was the fish factory. Oh, they did. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, we've we've been there a number of times, and it's not a huge place, but it's it's just well done. I mm -hmm. I think I've done two store tours of the fish factory, and um, I like it. I I think they and they've got a nice selection of fish. I think and so. The people who work there are they're awesome. nice. Yeah, and and the same thing with Aquatics Unlimited. I it just mm -hmm. it's a bigger place, but mm -hmm. it's nice. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for the cool sticker Aww. love it she loves the stickers man i love the stickers yeah. i love stickers aquarium is maintained by andy with the super chat thank you so much amen do the research first couldn't yep. agree with you more and by the way that helps the fish store employees too when you walk in there and you know and they know that you you are on your game you know what you're talking about it, it makes their life easier you know even when i bought those congo tetras i bought all nine of them the guys like what kind of size, what size tank you have? I'm like, I got 80 tanks. Okay, no problem. Because he's, you know, it's, it's like when you hear that, it's like, okay. Um, wait, I saw something that was important. Oh, Brandon, Bears or Packers fans? Now, don't say anything. Some of you actually know what my favorite team is. I just want to see mm -hmm. if they remember from okay. the holidays, mm -hmm. what is my favorite team? And you can just wait on everything for a second there Ooh. because, yeah. Uh, Finn Wiggles, thank you so much for the super chat. How do I Thanks. know when my tank is seasoned enough to add shrimp? That's a great question because unlike fish, shrimp depend, in my opinion, they depend more on their environment than your, your average fish would, unless it's like a scavenger or something like that, like a pleco. But I would say... One, the tank needs to be cycled, right? So that's number one thing. If your tank is cycled, that's step one. Then you can probably put some shrimp in your tank because most likely you're going to be feeding your shrimp something at that point. You're not going to depend, they're not going to be dependent on the environment in a tank that's only three or four or five weeks old. Or if you instantly cycle it, maybe put some used filter floss in your tank. So that's going to be something different. But if your tank is cycled, you, you can add the shrimp, but then just know they might need the, what are those things called for the shrimp? The snowflake, snow pop I always little call, guys. I call them snow yeah. pops, but I think they're actually called snowflakes. Yeah. And I know Flip Aquatics, he's like the, the shrimp guy. Um, and by the way, when we're talking about quarantine, I asked him the other yesterday, I'm like, hey, what are you quarantining your fish? Now, keep in mind, he's an online retailer. He's like, fish aren't moving out of our, our area for two weeks, which is crazy. I mean, how many online retailers and again they are a channel sponsor we want to be super clear about that uh, but how many online retailers do you know that absolutely are going to quarantine their fish for at least two weeks before you know when they get them in before they send them out but yeah they he feeds those things the little uh the shrimp sticks you mm -hmm. can use those those are fine usually i feel more comfortable once i start to see algae 
I especially like it if I get a little bit of green hair algae. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got, the other thing that you can do is if you've got Java moss that's been sitting in a separate tank, chuck some of that in your new tank there. You're, you're gonna see they're gonna be all over that. Same thing with hornwood or a used piece of driftwood. Lots of options there. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Oh, something just skipped on me. We've got Miss, Miss Angela. Angela P3233, thank you so much for thank the super you. chat. All right, uh oh, this looks sad. Lost my discus fish yesterday after Aww. having him for two years. No signs of illness. Tank's been cycled three years now. Check pH, ammonia, all parameters. Your thoughts? Aww. Aww. So I guess the first question is, and, and you can follow up with this in the chat, if you've added anything new, you know, sometimes we add in a new fish and that fish looks okay, and but they bring something into the tank. Maybe it's bacterial, maybe it's a fungal thing. Uh, maybe it's some it's some kind of a parasite and it wipes out other types of fish even though they are harboring that fish almost as like a, a normal flora a, a, a symbiont with them it can make the other fish really sick so that can happen so if there was new fish that were brought in that's certainly a possibility if it hasn't been new fish again sometimes we're just looking at and discus in, in particular if the genetics are a little bit off you never know right why why some of these organisms die a little bit sooner. So if you, if your water parameters were in check and you're bringing in fish that have been quarantined, at least know that you did what you were supposed to do. And sometimes we lose animals and it, it, it stinks. I mean, we, I go back to not fish, but when we lost our last dog, mm. uh, Mac, he was a great dog. He was an Italian Mastiff and he was awesome and then just one day we walked out and he was only five and a half years old and he passed away and it was really hard but and you start wondering what did i do you know what did i do and sometimes you don't do anything and it just yeah. they just pass and so if your water parameters were great maybe it might just, just a, been that maybe just a fish heart it was just time yeah just a heart yep. attack. ah so we got a whole bunch of people commenting 49ers yes so to answer your question <laughs> the 49ers are my favorite team but but I do like the Bears. Mm -hmm. I would say it. my favorite team goes 49ers and then the Bears. After that, I don't really know. And then uh, you keep changing because when I first what? met you, you were, I think you were, I don't remember I don't what change, you, really. yes, you do because you said Baseball, something about, yeah. no, when we first met, I thought you said something about the Patriots. No, never. No, maybe it was a team that you hated, but you Bills. had, I used the to. The Bills, that's I... what it was. It was the Bills. I was probably the reason that the Bills lost all the Super Bowls because they were like my favorite team. So yeah. every single time, that, yeah. was, that was me that did that. But I, I like the Bears. I've always liked the Bears. But this is what happened. A couple of years ago, my sister moved to Wisconsin. She doesn't watch football or anything. Yeah. But apparently, when you move to Wisconsin, you have to be a football fan for the Packers. So she, even she is a Packers fan. And then my dad all of a sudden becomes a Packers fan. Yeah. I have no idea what that happened. So I, I kind of go between Bears and Packers, but I mean, I prefer Bears. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Evil Moon Key. Oh, Aquatics yeah. Unlimited, amazing for things like lights, gravel, scape stuff, etc., and a massive selection of fish. Better luck mm -hmm. with the fish and plants at Fish Factory. Yeah, like I said, I like them both. I uh, had good luck with both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian asks, what is your favorite fish in the hobby? Again, I think we all know, well, actually, I don't know if we all know yours. My favorite fish, I got to be honest, my favorite fish, it it changes. It, they're the same. They're, they kind of rotate. And so my favorite fish alternates between the geophagus, especially the altafrons. Yes. Uh, I love geophagus wine milleri. I love geophagus cernamensis. Love them. Full To me, full-grown geophagus are some of the most beautiful freshwater fish that you could possibly imagine. If you haven't seen it, we did the Fish Room Tour Part 2 in our 150-gallon of the geophagus altafrons in there. I also posted a picture on Instagram recently. My favorite-looking fish, I think, is the geophagus altafrons. But I also really love shell dwellers, and so their personalities are great. Uh, I love my Cypochromus leptosoma, or most Cypochromus species, like Tanganyikan uh, sardine fish, I really like a lot. And you? Betta, pea puffers, and sparkling garami would probably be, probably be. That wasn't even what I was thinking. What I thought thinking? that you were going to, because you I mean, just, I have, silly I so bucket many. list fish that you've been hounding everybody about. The green neon. I thought you were going to oh, say that. Yeah, but, sure. But I yeah. mean... I have to list, you know, my babies. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. um, 
Zanadudu. I just like saying that. <laughs> thank you for a lot. It's just thank you because I like saying that. <laughs> um, I lived outside MKE. I don't even know how to... What is in the parentheses? A Kano Awak? For seven years, didn't have oh. tanks again until I moved back to Minnesota last year. Might need to visit friends there and check out the local fish stores. Yeah. Mm. Um, have we done... We haven't done... Oh, is that MKE? Is that, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know where it, that is. I'm, what's I'm, MKE? I'm, all right, so Are I'm not the only one. Right? It says MKE right there. Okay. So I don't know where that is, but anyway... <laughs> I hope you do get to visit your local fish stores and have a great time. Uh, Filigree Aquatics, have you guys ever kept Emperor Tetras? Yes. In fact, I believe, you know, this is the problem with like 70 or 80 tanks. I don't get to spend like hours on each one and it's kind of sad, but I think we still have our mail in the 150. And so I had a group of them and over time they kind of just got to be a smaller and smaller group. And then I had a pair in the 150 for a long time and it was kind of interesting because they were in a tank with some of those larger fish that you see in our 150. And so, yeah, it's, I love Emperor Tetras. Now I do know that they can be a little bit more aggressive as a Tetra, but my gosh, fully grown, those colors, that purple and that black and those tails, Crazy. absolutely awesome. JFK2, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank Thanks you. for all the great info. Really enjoy your stream, guys. Well, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. And for everybody, for being here tonight. I know we're going a little bit later because we started a little bit later. Um, glad you're here. MKE oh, Milwaukee Airport. Milwaukee Airport. See, that's the problem. Not it's really like, like a, LAX. A world traveler or, over here. Okay. So got it. I yeah. Now I got not. it. Now I I should know that. Now we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's and it's and there's other fish stores up in the Milwaukee area too. And you know what? There's a really oh, what was the one? And maybe some of you could help. I, and I, I feel bad because I did a fish store tour of this place when we were up by Custom Aquariums with Creative Pet Keeping. We were there, and it's up by the Green Bay area, and it's right on one of the main roads. And there's oh yeah, oh, what was that place? But it was awesome. They had so many cool, unusual fish there. Now I can't remember the name of the place, oh, but I, have it's, no idea. I don't um, know if it's in Green Bay, but it's in that area, and it's yeah. it's cool. It was really cool. Um, um, wait, somebody somebody called me out for no shrimp. Um, yeah, I could go on and on about it. Like, if I keep going more than three, then absolutely, I love my pumpkin shrimp. I love the blue shrimp. I love, oh, I mean, serious cherry shrimp. Uh, CPDs. Love my CPDs. Gold neon, gold, or gold tetras. <gasps> love the gold tetras. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so I anyways, I could, yeah. But yeah, shrimp. Yeah, shrimp. Now, do you have Too a favorite tiny. color? Of shrimp? Yeah. That's a good question. Like, and we're talking about Neil Caradina, right? Just the average, yeah, yeah, yeah. not like the Caradinas, because then you're like, oh, you know. No, I probably the pumpkin shrimp just because mm. it's so fun and fallish. <laughs> fun and fallish. I personally like the blues, but I love them all. Reds, blues, pumpkins, yellows, mm -hmm. the black rose shrimp. We've got some of those. Uh, all cool. Uh, Nathan has a good question. Mm. What's your favorite guppy strain? So, hmm. I'm not like a guppy connoisseur, so you have to you have guppy to understand. Guru? I'm not a guppy guru. I there's like a million guppies, and I see them. I have no idea what they're called. I look at them, I'm like those are stinking cool. I can tell you, and again, we're not sponsored by them or anything, but Twin Cities guppies. Every time I see like his guppies, I'm like, and we actually have a couple strains. We've had a couple strains of his. One that's still up and going. Uh, we've got some Dumbo ear guppies that are absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, Platinum. Don't we have some? Uh we don't have the, the platinums are cool. Yeah, I like those yeah. a lot. I think one of my favorites were some of the albinos that we had for a while. Uh, they were they weren't very hardy, and they never bred for us. But I really liked the the, the albinos that we had. Those were cool. Um, and then we you know, like the leopard guppies that I've seen recently. I think I saw those on Instagram not long ago. Those are really awesome. Guppies are some of those line bred strains are are just crazy awesome. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Let's see, uh, Jester's Aquariums. I cannot for the life of me get any blue shrimp to survive. I have red and orange colonies all over the house, but the blues oh. die no matter where I get them from. You know, that's interesting because I've heard that before. In fact, when we started keeping the blues, I heard from a number of people that, oh, you know what, your blues, you know, how do you, good luck keeping them alive. A couple things in that tank. So we have them now in, 
I want to say at least two tanks. We have them in a 40 gallon breeder and we have them in a 20 gallon log. We have them in my kitchen tank too. I have the orange and the blue. Yeah, you've together. got them all mixed together, which they're all going to turn brown and then you're going to be really sad That's about okay. that. But no, I'm just kidding. Well, I'm not kidding, but fun it's together. fine. Um, so with the blues, we had really good luck with them. Um, we. I think the blues, I don't remember where we got them from. I don't remember if that was a Flip Aquatics that that he brought them or we got them from him. I, I really don't remember, but they bred like crazy. I mean, for a while, there's was like, oh my gosh, we had probably a thousand blue dream shrimp yeah. in our 40 gallon breeder. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to start moving these around just in case something ever happens to that tank. But then it was weird because they bred like crazy and then it, we must have had a die back because I didn't see thousands of them anymore. We had a few hundred, and now they're making a comeback. I see little babies in there again. So we've had okay luck with them. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, the other thing that people sometimes comment on is the blues, they tend to go brown faster. I have found actually that to be the opposite for us. I find a lot of our reds go brown a lot faster, and even some of the pumpkin shrimp that we've got now, they're starting to throw more browns that we've got to do something with. So... Uh, Alhana says, do you have Dumbo mosaic guppies by any chance? So Luke, our oldest son, he was the one that got the guppies. They're Dumbo and he's the only one that can remember like the actual strain. You're actually going to see them on the channel in the not too distant future because we're giving them a new home. So, but I don't remember what the Dumbos were called. They weren't mosaics, but they're, they're pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. All right, let's see here. Uh, Jeffrey says at Amanda Baker, my local fish store is the same, no labels or names, just seven dollars per bunch. <laughs> okay, good. There you go. Yep. Hmm. Uh, let's see here. Amanda says I have a locally bred strain of blue shrimp and going well so far. That's awesome. So yeah, maybe it's just it depends on where you get them from. It, it it could just be the strain. You know, and that's the other thing too is, you know, we've, we've been talking about local fish stores. They have to be careful, I think, too, where they buy fish from and. You want to make sure that wherever you're buying things from, you don't have a lot of inbred things going on. Like I remember for a while, just because it was convenient, we would get guppies from one of the big box stores and I'd bring them home. They were, they were pretty enough. We just, hey, want to do some guppies, something simple, throw them in a 10 or 20 gallon. And within like a week, they'd all be dead. And it was like time and time and time again. It, it literally got to the point where I'm like, you know what? I don't know what my problem is, but guppies are just, you know, you've got that one fish. I would love to hear from you guys in the chat. What is that one fish that's like, I can't keep it alive. Everything should be okay. And it's not working. For a long time, I thought it was guppies. Until we started, we got some from Twin Cities guppies. We were getting them from the Chicago Live Bear Society. We were getting them from the Greenwater Aquarius Society. And then it was like, remember we had the guppy party tank? Yeah. Like if you look back at some of the fun. old fish room tours, we had a 20 gallon tank hmm. and they were breeding like crazy. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's just about where you're getting your fish from. And if, Things are getting too inbred. I think that's a big problem with bettas too. Yeah, and I think that was oh, yeah. part of the problem that you Absolutely. had on your nano walls. Maybe that's what made them less hardy. Some of these line bred bettas, they get really just genetically flawed. I think that the biggest problem fish, where it comes to genetics, at least for us, has been the electric blue Jack Dempsey. Cool looking fish, and when you see those fish at a pet store, you're like. <laughs> those are awesome and usually they're like 30 40 50 bucks a piece and they're like this big and like i gotta have it i have to have it <laughs> well i did that one time years ago like when they first started coming out the local fish store had it was like 50 bucks i'm like i don't care i'm getting that fish i get this thing throw it in the tank it got to be like two inches and it died i'm like oh that's great but then i'm like okay you know what people were selling them at the local clubs i'm like all right well these will probably be healthier let me buy a bag of them the same thing kept happening it's like these fish, I have I have yet to see in my, with my own two eyes, right? I have yet to see an electric blue Jack Dempsey over like three or four inches. That looks amazing. Usually they get to be like, and it's not just mine. I've seen them in other areas. I don't know if you're maybe just inbred in the Chicagoland area. The spines are bent. The mouths are crooked. They got like an eye up here or there. They <laughs> oh look God. like something out of like, I don't cool. know, Nightmare Before Christmas or something. Like, ah, I'm a fish. Um so like a centerpiece fish then? Oh, yeah, definitely centerpiece fish. If you've got like that tank that's supposed to be for, I don't know, scaring the ever-loving <laughs> stuff out of all your guests that you have come to the house. Yeah. So let, I, I would love to hear from you. Has anybody had like really good luck with electric blue Jack Dempsey's? And I mean long-term. I'm not talking about like, oh, I've got one now that's two inches. I'm like, yeah, I've got a 
five or six inch electric blue deck Jack Dempsey that looks amazing. All of mine die every single time, and it hmm. makes me feel like a failure. Way to go. Yeah. All right, you, you, you want a stocking question? I do want a stocking okay, question. Okay, David Arnold. Okay. Do you think it's overstocking to have two Oscars, one Pearl Cichlid, one Electric Blue Acara, one Gold Nugget, and three Clown Loaches, a Partridge in a Pear Tree, and a 125-gallon? Okay, so we're dealing... I wish you would give me the tank size first, young lady. Oh, 125-gallon. 125-gallon. You got how yeah. many Oscars? Two. And a Pearl? Yeah. And one Electric Blue Acara, one Gold Nugget. And three clown loaches. No, I think you're probably pushing the limit. I don't know if it's necessarily overstocked. I I wouldn't add any more. <laughs> um, and you'll just have to see how that works out, right? I mean, that's that's always a thing. But in terms of the size, a six foot tank, I if it works, cool. I think as long as your filtration is good, maybe you're running a couple hang on backs or an FX six or something like that, or some you know a bunch of sponge filters. Yeah, it's probably. I think it's it could be potentially doable. I do. Um, what might be cool, I mean, three clown launches is good. I think if if I were just stocking the tank, like if I hadn't done any of that yet, I might cut back on maybe, I don't know, maybe one, maybe one of the Oscars. That might be the thing I might cut back on just to maximize my chances of success and add a couple more clown launches because the bigger that group is, the cooler they're going to be. All right. Okay, wait. All right, skippity, skeep, skeep. Wanted to know. Please try to remember what it was called in Green Bay because that's where they live. But it wasn't Green Bay. It was. It was. We, it was we you weren't drive, there. Oh, you were, it was Kasha and I. We went there when we visited Custom oh, Aquariums. that's not the one that I was thinking of then. No, we, it was me and, and Creative Pet Keeping. We went up there. Would it when be we your custom- video then? Yeah, I've got a video. So it, All right, video? so here's the thing. What video? If you go in the description after the live stream, because we're hanging out, we're having fun. If you go after the live stream in the description, I have a playlist of fish store tours. It's in there. I know that's not a lot of help. Maybe if you went in the description, well, it, then you have to go in the playlist. Never mind. But it's there. I promise you, it's there, and it's really cool. It 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 was. I, I remember they had, um, they he let us go in like their basement where they've got like a lot of fish that they quarantine and stuff. And oh my gosh, it was, the fish they had there. It was just. It was fun. It was like one of the stores where I was like, wow, every time I was turning around, like, oh, that's a cool fish. So, um, all right, let's see. Brian Gomes. What? I actually found out that drinking water is good for fish tanks, so I get buckets and fill it up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. I didn't know that. All right, let's see here. Um, looking for, okay, here we go. Jake. KK Grand 2, any suggestions on how much to sell my baby Neil Amperlagus Caudopunctatus for? They're about four weeks old, with the oldest being five weeks. So they're still pretty young, right? They're still pretty small at four weeks. They're probably less than an inch. Um, I think if it were me, I would let them grow to at least an inch, right? And I know the females that's approaching advanced aquariums. Thank you, Jack C. That is the place. All right. Yep. Advanced Aquariums. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah, I that was a cool place. Anyway, for the caudal punks, it depends on your market, right? It also depends on your water parameters. And so for us in the Chicagoland area, because we have harder water, cichlids do African cichlids do really well. But if you were like, let's say in the I know like in the aquarium co-op area in the upper northwest, he's got really soft water up there. And um, so if you if you're in an area where African cichlids generally do well. Now, the other question is, are you trying to sell them at a pet store? Or are you trying to sell them on Aquabid? Are you trying to sell them on Craigslist and just meet somebody somewhere? If I were selling them locally, like if I were going to a swapper auction, they're not super common around here. And so I'm pretty sure 10 bucks a piece at a swapper auction. Keep in mind, people are generally looking for deals there. So I think that's probably about what I would sell them for at a swap auction obviously they're gonna go for whatever they go for but I'm, I'm assuming they'd probably go for about 10 bucks a piece if i were just if i were trying to sell them to a local fish store again now you've got to figure okay they've got their overhead i think if you're negotiating with a local fish store somewhere in that 25 to 33 percent of their sale price range is i think pretty fair right again it depends on your areas it could be more it could be less depends on how many other people are breeding in which case they might be able to sell them for 
25 bucks a piece in which case you're like you know what i want 10 bucks a piece for that too right so yeah i think in that ten dollars per fish might be a, a good starting point and see see how they do right especially if they're they're rare in your area they're so cool looking all right let's see here um jk Higron, the water where i am is hard enough african cichlids do well i'm selling locally most will go to a local fish store but i'll i'll be selling some at auctions yeah well so, so for the auctions you you won't know what you get until what i would recommend if you're doing auctions right not swaps but auctions it's worth it if your club has the ability to do priority bags and you can pay a dollar or something to bring that bag up early when people are really bidding don't make the mistake that i make sometimes and let your high value fish sit there on a table because at least for our club auctions they randomly pick the tables and so they assign if you bring 10 bags most likely one bag is going to wind up on each table if you've got the expensive fish on a table that doesn't get called until one or two o'clock in the afternoon there's a really good chance you're not going to get very much money for that if you see that happen it's like probably by the second table if they can do priority bags pay the extra couple bucks to have it sold a little bit earlier you'll get closer to what you want uh, let's see here. Uh, Vaughn asked, I, I'm sorry, I missed this question before I was going to answer. Can I put chocolate gouramis with discus? So I haven't kept discus in a very long time. And so I want to make sure that I make that clear from the start. I haven't kept chocolate gouramis in a really long time. I don't know if I would chance it. Um, I don't think the chocolate gouramis are overly aggressive from what I can remember. But again, it's been so long and I don't even remember what I had them with. Yeah, I, I probably just wouldn't just because discus are so pretty as they are and anything that stresses them out or even they just start getting chased a little bit. I just, I don't think I'd be, for me personally, I don't know if I'd want to chance it. But if someone's kept those combinations before and like, oh yeah, it worked just fine, definitely leave that in the chat. What you got? Nothing right now. Nothing? Nothing. Just just chilling, looking at the comments? Yep. Okay. Uh, Andrew asks, I'm thinking of getting a 30 gallon with a school of black phantom tetras. Is there any other fish that you guys would recommend? I like the black phantoms. I've got um, white skirt tetras right now, which which are really great in the 125. The black phantoms are we've had we had a big school of them in our 125 as well. They didn't for whatever reason. I don't that tank was like something was wrong with that tank early on, and so they lasted a while, but then they kind of just burnt out on us. But black phantom tetras are one of my favorite tetras. I like them a lot. In a 30, any other fish that I would recommend? I, I'd probably do some kind of like a centerpiece thing, whether that's a pistos or rams or cribs or a dwarf garami, uh, you know, something with some different type of color. Uh, you could certainly do quarry cats in a tank like that of just about any kind, maybe a group of four to six. Um, what else? I mean, there's just so many options, but a nice group of black phantoms would be cool so maybe eight to ten in a tank like that what else for us like a centerpiece smaller fish but i think like a lot of the south central american smaller like a pistol size would be that'd be pretty interesting i would definitely think that could work um t-bones fishes can i put guppies with a dwarf garami maybe um, dwarf garamis, like the, the regular dwarf garamis, I'm not talking like honey garami would probably work better, but guppies are pretty quick. The dwarf garami, and it, part of this depends on the size of the tank. If you're, you know, 29 gallons, you're probably gonna have less problems than if it's a 10 gallon or a 20, right? Um, dwarf garamis, I, I probably like the female dwarf garamis better than the males. They tend to be a little bit less aggressive. And so that's kind of a nice thing. It, I don't know if they'll, it, it, all these, it, the fish can have an individual personality. I, I would probably try it. I would probably feel okay with trying that combo, but you always run the risk of the dwarf gramis fin nipping the guppies, right? Especially if it's a male. They tend to be a little bit more aggressive. Let's see here. Uh, oh, B101. What's the furthest you've traveled to buy or sell fish? Just curious. The furthest I've traveled. Huh. I guess it would be Wisconsin, right? Wisconsin? I think it would be Wisconsin. <laughs> to, to buy and sell fish how who are you trying to talk about? i don't like, even know chicago are you trying yeah. to or i think it would be wisconsin yeah i think that i think it is i think it's like the milwaukee area is about as far as i've gone um 
That's not saying um, I wouldn't go further, but <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's it's always a possibility. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, well, what do we got here? I'm missing some some stuff here. Finn Wiggles, thank you so much for the cool oh, little sticker. Oh, Appreciate it. And bus. then uh, Bible WordPress, how's it going? It's going well, Brandon. It's going well. Thank you so much thank you. for the sticker. Appreciate it. <laughs> Those guys are funny, man. I love them. Uh, all right, let's do, because I know we ran late, right? And I, let's maybe answer like three more questions and then... I'm going to have to figure out because this whole YouTube thing is still in the display up there. It looks yeah, so all weird. really strange. All we really, all we really see in there is like top part of my, top part of my forehead. Yeah. It's really weird. Uh, so Rainbow Gaming asks, what should I do if I want to sell some unplanned fry? It depends on what those unplanned fry are. Mm-hmm. Um, are they, what are they? So are they, are they plecos? Are they guppies? Are they convicts? It just depends on what they are because if they're not desirable fish, you might not be able to sell them at all. You might just be able to give them away or maybe talk the local fish store if you've got a relationship with them to say, hey, can you want to take these for free and just give me a thing of food? But if there's something really cool, then you might be able to sell them at a local fish store. You might be able to sell them online. Let's see here. Russell. Molly's. Ma- Molly's. Oh, so... Again, I kind of I think the mollies are something you could potentially bring to a local fish store and just I don't think you're going to get a lot for them because they generally don't sell for a lot. Um, but I think it's worth at least asking the question, you know, saying, "Hey, I've got these and they bred," and you might have to wait until they're an okay size. Like for them, a sellable size might be you're going to need at least a, maybe an inch or so, maybe a little bit larger, uh, so that they can bring them in and just get rid of them, right? Because you're asking them, "Hey, I got these things. They're starting to." you know, they're overwhelm my tank. If you bring them fish that are like a half inch or three quarters of an inch, you're like, that was great, but I'm going to have to sit on these now for a month or two and feed them just so I can sell them. So um, I would start there. Start with your local fish store. The problem is with with mollies and just some of like the, the more general, like I had a question pop up in one of the comments, like, hey, where can I buy platies online? Those are harder fish to, to sell online. And it's not that they're hard to ship or anything. It's just most people aren't looking to buy platies and many types of mollies online, right? They're just, if they're going online, they're trying to, they're usually trying to find fish that are a little bit less common. And so that's one where you're probably going to have to go to a local fish store, put something out there on, you know, like a Craigslist or Aquabit, say, hey, for local pickup only, we'll meet you somewhere and maybe you get a buck or two per fish. And if you go to a local fish store, trade it in, get some food, that might be something. Mary Page Flynn. Thank you so much for the super chat. Silly. Hey guys, I've been mostly lurking tonight. I just want you to know I'm always here, loving what you're doing. We Thanks for you. all the positivity and education you bring into our community every day. Well, thank you very much for the super chat. Thanks for being here. And to, Love that to you're here. You, Mary, and our awesome yep. moderators, which. And by the way, if you haven't checked out, Mary's got a YouTube channel, and what I love about it is it's it's like it's so real, right? You just I like watching I could, the videos because they're you feel like you're just hanging out with if, with with Mary at the on YouTube. If so, you ever do like a twenty four seven channel, sign me yeah, up. Right, just I just hang out. Just yeah, here's my tank, guys. All. Yeah, very nice, down to earth. I like it. I like it. I like what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here, uh, Delta Charlie. Nice hardscape display in the. Oh, we didn't even talk about it because our we had our catastrophe. You, yeah, you were too busy. Like panicking. I wasn't panicking. I was just moving quickly because I felt like I have an obligation <laughs> to get things started chatting. on time. It was great. Yeah, I know. Um, anyway, oh, nice yeah. hardscape display in the. Oh, I lost it's, it in the back, Joanna. I recognized yeah. the IKEA containers hey, from your you recent got that, video. Right? And FYI, um, is that what's back in? Okay. Yes. Yeah, those are three of them. They haven't been scaped yet, so they're hanging out there. They will be scaped very soon. But I always leave little Easter eggs, either that or nods to the topic of the day. Um, it I didn't tell you, but my intent was to actually create a f- uh, fish store front. Um, oh, is that what you were? I was I was going to do, but then I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm just going to run out of time. But um, yes, there's always Easter eggs in there. So there you well, go. what was really funny is it was probably like maybe. 45 minutes before we were supposed to go live and i was like hey didn't you say you were going to do something different with the back she's like oh yeah and then she you started yeah, well, rearranging everything you, i pointed to like all the yeah. stuff i had down there 
You just yeah. thought I was being messy, but you know. Well, you know, it happens. Uh, Alex says, love the channel. What's the best show fish for a 150-gallon tank with ballast sharks, tinfoil barbs, garamis, rose, rosy barbs? Looking for say, something nice. That sounds good. So that's familiar. cool. Yeah, right? Um, except I'm assuming your 150 is probably a six-footer, where mine was a four-footer with the ballast sharks and tinfoil barbs. So... That's a great question because you've got some fish in that tank that are very active, right? The tinfoil barbs, at least for us, they were constantly going back and forth, back and forth. The ballast shark tended to, at least our ballast shark tended to kind of, I wouldn't say bully the tinfoil barbs. He's kind of like always definitely trying to dominate them, but he never fitted through or anything like that. But you've got some active fish in there. Um, so what would I do with that for a centerpiece fish? The problems that I had, at least in my 150, is they were so active that even like when you look at my 150 with the Severums and the Geophagus, and I got the Frontosa in there, which people are like, why you got a Frontosa in there? <laughs> um, that's one where, man, it's the activity level. It, mm -hmm. It's it's going to be tough. I'm, and it depends on how many tinfoil barbs and ballast sharks you've got in there because a lot of those, the fish are... You know, especially if you've got them, like a lot of them, you, you might have a situation where, at least in terms of bio you're you're approaching as much as you can do with that, right? Um, so I'm not sure. I don't know what I would add with those fish. And a 150, if we're getting close, like if you've got three or four tinfoil barbs in there and a few ballast sharks in a six-foot 150, you're probably, once they grow to you know, be that foot or 14 inches for the tinfoil barbs and they get really wide-bodied, you're going to be it's going to be a pretty packed tank, right? So I am i don't know what I would put in there. Like if I could do it again, I'm not sure because every fish that I put in there, they were always either off to the sides and it wasn't like drastic, but they were either towards the bottom. They just stayed out of those more active fish's way. So probably like an Oscar or something like that might, might, might work, you know, but yeah, man, I don't know. I That's really tough. don't. Yeah, because yeah. you're going to run out of room in there. Yeah, Eve Howard, thank you so much for the st sticker. Oh, Appreciate it. That's you. awesome. Thank uh -huh. you. Very cool. All right, let's do two more. Let's do two more, and then we're going to – we'll call it a night here, and we'll let everybody – because I know it's getting late, for, especially for some of you guys on the East Coast, and my gosh, for some of you who are across the pond, as they say. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, fantastic fish friends. I am going to record my first YouTube videos. I Ooh. want to add a shout out and a link to the small scape videos on Anubius. Do you mind if I drop the link? Sure, go ahead and drop the mic. Uh, drop the link if you want. Thank drop you. Drop the mic. Drop <laughs> drop the mic. Boom. <laughs> I hope you drop the mic. Gee. Um yeah, that's awesome. So, hope everything Thanks. runs well. Yeah. That'll good be luck. very cool. Go get them. Yeah. So, all right, one more. One more we're going to do. Um let's see here. Jerry Wong, this is a good question. Is there any reason you guys don't have any beta community tanks? Would you guys consider doing a video, the idea specifically? So I'll let you answer the beta community. Wait, okay, wait, I'm sorry. I was actually um, reading a comment. I didn't hear it. But just so you know, I should read this. Bible WordPress notice. Don't forget to get her a Valentine's Day gift. <clears throat> 11 days left until... Hashtag don't forget. God bless. Have a good week, Brandon. Thanks, man. Appreciate Thanks. it. Now I'm going to be in double trouble if I forget because we'll I'm going to get that. remember that. Yeah. All right. So anyway, can we answer the yeah, so what was better the question? question? Uh, Jerry said, is there any reason you guys don't have a, any better community tanks? Would you guys consider doing a video <gasps> that, that idea specifically? That is very interesting because we have actually been talking uh, about creating one. Um we just haven't gotten around to it. It just becomes like the tanks. And so I think, all right, well, we do have the, the beta in the 15 gallon column with the, or we did with the yeah. touch, with the Ember Tetras and the golds. Mm -hmm. um, and I've done that. I mean, we've uh, certainly, it's very doable. I mean, to have betas in just a, as part of a community tank. And I mm -hmm. think we're thinking about doing that in the future with some of, some of the rescapes we've got, because we've got some betas that need to move around a little bit. So um, yeah. And when we do it, we will definitely mm -hmm. put it on video. Yeah, but generally speaking, the bettas that have come in have gone either to nano tanks that yeah. just pop up around the house, or they've gone on to my nano wall in the right. nano nook right now. So. B101 said, Jason, one bald bearded man to another, how often do you <laughs> shave your head? Well, it depends on what I want to look like. Um, usually, if I really want this look, it's every day. Uh, but sometimes I get lazy, especially with all the work from home stuff. It might be... Mm -hmm every yeah. few days but mm -hmm. yeah all right last thing ricky thank you so much for the super chat thank thinking you. about starting a 20 long with some shellies looking for Ooh. some ideas in terms of color 
I always, with my shell dweller tanks, lighter colored sand with a darker background, but that lighter color sand for your Maltese, your Brevis, your Gold, any of the Ocelotus, the Meliagris are going to look great. The only, 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 only time I use black sand is with Neolamprologus similis. They look better on dark sand, in my opinion. Okay, so go light colored sand. You can do a, a darker background, but definitely a light colored sand with all of your shell dwellers, with the exception of similis, then you can do black. And that's just how I roll with it. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much for your patience tonight, getting everything started. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you to everyone with the super chats and the stickers and everything. And for our moderators, Clint and Riddle and uh, Mary Page was lurking and all that yeah. stuff. Thank you for everything that you do. We will be back next Wednesday. We've got some videos coming up again at the end of the week. That should be pretty cool. Hope you enjoy them. And we will see you next week and hopefully i will not panic when i see or stress when i see yeah, a little picture on the youtube thing forehead. all right everybody we'll see you later see ya oh so